Hi, I'm your Gemini friend. So this video is going to be about Chiron in Taurus and Chiron in the second house. When it comes to whether you have Chiron in Taurus or the second house, I will differentiate between the two. But as I'm explaining through the video, I'm kind of combining the energy because it's very similar where it's coming from. But the sign of Taurus, this is going to indicate that your Chiron is acting through Taurus energy. It is the personality of Chiron and the way that the energy manifests, but it's not the area of life that it affects. That would be the house, and if you have Chiron in your second house, it's going to be affecting the area of security, finances. I'll go much more into it in depth in the video, but both Taurus and the second house have a lot to do with security, comfort, finances, and our overall sense of worth and value. So the theme of this Chiron, whether it's in Taurus or the second house, is going to be about your sense of worth, your sense of your value. And this is something that can go very, very deep because this is dealing with our sense of safety in everyday life to some extent. When it comes to Chiron, I have a video in the description that goes over Chiron's energy more and describes what this placement means within your chart. But overall, it is, it's, it's a wound. It's a deeply painful and vulnerable part of us that through healing it, we are able to help and heal other people. This has a lot to do with our role in society, with our sense of purpose in life, and with bridging the gap between the more material part of life and the more spiritual, indescribable parts. There's a strong theme of acceptance when it comes to Chiron, which can be very difficult. But this is one of those situations where the more you resist, the harder it becomes. It's better in the long run to lean into Chiron's teachings and to identify what that is represented as in your chart. So I do offer personal natal chart readings and synastry readings if you're interested in that, but let's get into this. So one of the major things when it comes to Chiron in Taurus is to look at the personality of Taurus. This is a fixed earth sign, so it can be focused on practical matters, it can be stubborn, and this archetype, this Chiron archetype, would be the wounded builder because Taurus is absolutely a building sign. It has the resilience and the commitment and the sureness to follow through with a job, but when we have wounds regarding this energy, it can be expressed through being overly attached to our values and even to our judgments. There can actually be a difficulty in understanding and allowing the differences between other people. There's sometimes a fundamental understanding of things that is very core, very set, very much the way it is within this Taurus energy. It's fixed. It is the way that it is, and to be able to step outside of that, it can be difficult sometimes because of the nature of this desire to stay safe when the energy is wounded. Because this sense of being very sure about your personal values, or the sense of like knowing that your way is best, it comes from this really strong desire to help, to build, to be there in support of whatever situation, whether you're focusing entirely on yourself or on the people that you take care of. This energy is a supportive energy. And sometimes that sureness is coming from a sense of protectiveness, whether that's wanting to protect and preserve what you have or what you have worked for. It's this sense of being very attached that can be material, physical, or it can be more in the mind, more like attached to ideas and concepts and rules that people should follow. But the thing about this is that it's not really about the rules, it's about the value. It's about the perceived value. And when it comes to value and worth, that's where the core of these issues is. I mean, the second house deals with our sense of self, our sense of like core value our talents, what we have to offer, what we see as valuable within ourselves. Of course, tied to money and possessions and our finances and stability. But Taurus and the second house, they're connected to Venus. There is the entire other side of it, the pleasure, the enjoyment. And this is something that you can totally block yourself off from, prevent yourself from 
experiencing pleasure or you could go the other direction and overcompensate for a feeling of lack of self-worth with overindulging or searching for things that make you feel better. When your Chiron is in Taurus, you can look at the house that it's in to determine your values, these values that are kind of ruling you in a way. When your Chiron is in the second house, it's more about the very concept of these values, of what you value. So it's also very important to determine what it is that you truly value, but sometimes this energy can come from such a fear of lack and the idea that hard work is always necessary. You have to work hard in order to deserve your worth, your life, deserve to exist. What are you working so hard for? Something just to consider. It, this placement really does value hard work, but it's more likely to either burn out or to stay stagnant if it's not dealt with. So something that can really help here is just more flexibility, more nuance. If you find that you tend towards black and white thinking, you could be using this against other people. You can be using it against yourself. You can be thinking, if I don't do this, if I don't achieve this, if I'm not this, then I'm not good enough. And of course, this can also be projected onto other people as judgments of their values, like, oh, they're wearing that, that must mean this about them. It, it all goes back to you though, like, I wouldn't feel comfortable wearing that, so I'm going to judge that person for it. Of course, there's a lot of nuance even within this little example that I just came up with, but it is ultimately the best thing to be unbothered by the way that other people live their lives and to be operating from your own personal system of what you value, what you think is worth working towards. And when you're on that path, when you're clearly steadily working towards what it is that you value, you will find that the way that other people live their lives doesn't really matter and you can feel very secure in your own personal way of living. It's about creating this security within yourself about the validity of what you're working for. This can come from being told very early on in life that what you value isn't important by people who have authority over you, which is of course incredibly painful and something that you will internalize and might use to hurt yourself for years in the future just because you like something. You know, it's really important to pay attention to what you're judging within yourself and the ways that this judgment also goes outwards. This is not inherently an extremely judgmental placement. It doesn't have to be, but it absolutely can be. So it's just something to watch, even if you are keeping it to yourself, even if you are self-judging. You need to be judging yourself based off of your own value system. Because if you're feeling bad about not being this one thing, like, does that even matter to you? Or is that just a projected expectation? This sort of thing can be so devastating though, because it can mess with your body image, it can mess with your finances, with your work ethic and your ability to keep yourself healthy and taken care of. It's very pervasive. This affects every area of life because it's felt in your core. It's felt your sense of like what you're worth in the world. You're always feeling that. It, it never goes away until you address the core wound. But even then, it's not really meant to go away. It's just meant to be integrated. And then you keep this knowledge of the pain and you are, when you're in your healed form, people are drawn to you who are going to be able to learn from you in this way. This is a connection that we all have to each other and part of a reason for our suffering. Of course, I mean, what do I know? But I think that it's a way that we connect um, to each other through pain, through having similar pain, and of course through healing that, even just through being there for people. And another thing that can come with this placement is very strong possessiveness, because this can come with, of course, that fear of loss and knowing loss very early on in life. It can cause you to really cling to the things that you've worked for. This can even be a sign of having experienced things that you've worked on very hard being ruined in some way. It's really important to separate your material possessions, what you have attained, your finances, all of that, what you can hold in front of you, what is on this material plane, 
that's different from your actual intrinsic worth. They are not the same. Having Chiron in Taurus feels more like the wounds are internal, like there's something wrong with you. Having Chiron in the second house, it, this can be more like issues with your material resources or issues with placing your own value on what you have. The second house is more about the objects, the, the effort, the lack of security and pain that comes from always worrying, always feeling like you don't have enough. This is a vital thing for humans, like to feel that you are always at risk, that you are never taken care of, that you will never have enough is extremely detrimental. That's a very difficult way to live. So focusing on your core talents, on the parts of you that are always going to be there, the the skills that you have always had, the, the interests that bring opportunities, you always have opportunities and you are inherently valuable as a person. But the thing that comes with Chiron in the second house is that that value that you might be wanting to place externally, it's on your ability to heal. It's on your ability to be there for other people and your ability to provide security for them. This could be in anything. I mean, there was an example in the book that I went over in the Chiron video, I'll link in the description, an example of like a roof builder, okay? Building the most secure roofs. Like it, it can be, Anything that might not even seem like a big deal to you. This is likely something that naturally comes to you, something that you're already good at. You have the skills to succeed and to make it. And putting the focus more on your practical abilities and those abilities, like the fact that you can do it, that you deserve it. It's always better than having your mind in the not enough. And it's so interesting the way that this is so circular. When it comes to our values and the way that we're judging ourselves, the value is being determined by the self. So we are also determining that we do not meet that standard. We are limiting our own value when we're insecure. It's, it's just the thing with, you know, constantly raising the bar. If you can't meet this, then you're not good enough, but that's something that you made up. You know, I'm just saying like, consider what judgments you've made about yourself that are completely arbitrary, that you can just get rid of. But I understand you can't just, you can't just throw away something that you have been believing for your entire life. I understand this is one of the placements that really does take that hard work, the dedication and the time because the distortion, the way that the guilt can come and there can be a very emotional element to this because this is related to the body. Both the second house and Taurus are so strongly associated with like our physicality. We are in a vessel and these vessels are affected by things that we can't even understand fully. Like the way that certain circumstances will bring on an urge, whether that is like, I want to eat something, I want to go shopping on my phone like i need to buy something i need to, it these are coming from a need to feel better about yourself in some way so examining what is it what is it about me that's so wrong and if it's something you can fix you can improve it if it's something that you can't change accept it but this is one of those energies where it's a really bad idea to get stuck in stagnancy to to wallow Taurus is not a good wounded energy to wallow in because Taurus energy is good at whatever it does. So it's gonna, it's gonna dig itself into the deepest hole. Instead, use your ability to work hard and have a strong sense of commitment and self-control. Use that to focus on what you value, on working towards getting more of whatever it is you value, whether it is something material, whether it's relationships, friendships, connections where you feel like you are helping and healing people, meeting to talk with people who are sharing similar issues. I think getting out of this inner mind space where Taurus has like labeled things and is making these value judgments Getting out of that and experiencing what other people have experienced and just their other ways of thinking. Even, I mean, you can do this. You don't have to get out to do this. You can just like look at what other people value and the way that they live their lives and just how drastically different that can be while also being valid. It shows you 
the validity of your own desires and your desires are there so that you can be who you're truly meant to be. We should be following our passions. They're there for a reason. But one example that I really liked of this being described as the broken artisan, the, the sort of artist who creates these beautiful works but cannot see the beauty in them. All they can see is what's wrong with them, what could be improve. It's all judgment. And of course art is. <laughs> art is a very nuanced subject within itself, but Taurus is strongly related to beauty and enjoying life. It's Venus energy. So it's really important to focus on the, the things that you consider to be of value <laughs> to work for. Venus shows our values in that way. It shows what we put importance on and are willing to put effort into. So when we're utilizing this part of Taurus, the sensual element of it can be used as drive to actually work towards what's going to be a long-term personal value as opposed to working yourself so hard in a job that you don't enjoy making yourself more unhealthy and more miserable, that is not necessarily going to improve your sense of value, but actively working towards what you consider to be important, obviously it's not easy, but I believe it's possible that we all have something that is core important to us that we can essentially subsist off of. I think that our interests and our passions are really the key to finding these things for us. But ultimately, ultimately, this placement, whether Chiron is in Taurus or the second house, it is about balancing our need for shared resources, the eighth house, and our ability to procure things on our own. It's about balancing what we can work for versus what we can also receive. We're not just working hard, we're, we're sharing, we're contributing, we're connecting. That's the purpose of Chiron, to connect and to heal through what we've been through. So I hope that this was helpful. Feel free to let me know what you think. And thank you so much for watching. I love you. Bye.